So that's on there somewhere. Be on the desktop. Good evening, yeah. and welcome to the February 9th, 2015 Town Council meeting. Um, would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Could we get the roll call by the town clerk? Chairman Ray? Here. Councilor Grennan? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor McCausland? Here. Councilor Sullivan? Here. Councilor Wagner? Present. And Councilor Walsh? Here. Thank you very much. We'll move on to town council reports and correspondence. Are there any town council reports? Yes, Caitlin. Just one from the shooting firing range committee. We are right now in talks with hiring somebody to do the independent safety evaluation as per ordered by the town council. And we are just awaiting the application from the Spurwing Quad and Gun Club and we will be scheduling our next meeting. So keep an eye out for that on the website. Thank you. Any other? Yes, Molly. I just have a quick update. I asked Jay. Sharma over at the library to tell me something about what was going on with usage this month and he gave me a, a really interesting statistic. He said even being closed for nine days, 35 percent of the month, we had 1,258 local patrons who visited the library in the month of January. I was really impressed with that number because every time I went to the library, people drove in and looked at me and said, oh, is it open? Because they'd drive in and say they couldn't really figure out which door to go in. But yes, the library is open. It seems to be functioning very well. And um, I, I'm pleasantly surprised at how well the operations are going on in there and that we actually do have users still coming in into that very small building in the back, the Spurwink School building. Um, and anybody who drove by last week saw there was a really big change that happened. And maybe Mike will give us an update on that in a few minutes. But very exciting and it's coming along. Thank you very much, Molly. Anybody else? Uh, no? Yes? Uh, my wife is an avid um, library goer and she is thrilled with what you've been able to do and incredibly impressed with how the staff has uh, reached out for citizens to make sure that they get the services that they require in that space. So she came home this week raving about whatever's happening it's, um, it, she's feeling very good about it, and I'm sure if she does, I'm sure there are other citizens that are feeling just as, just as good about it. That's great. Thank you. Hey, Jim. Anybody? Yes, Jessica. I'd just like to send a note of deep appreciation to our public works department. <laughs> I, they must be exhausted. All this snow is just unbelievable. So anyway, that's, that's what I've got to say. <clears throat> Thank you, Jessica. Anybody else? Okay, great, thank you. Moving on to the Finance Committee report. Jim? Well, what you have in front of you is hot off the press. I didn't get a real chance to read this uh, because of all the snow and, and the budget requirements that are taking place in the finance uh, office here in, in the town. But, um, you know, a couple things. Hopefully, uh, Jamie, that uh, with your feedback last time, we've got it right this time in terms of having uh, placeholders in the correct spot. Um, but um, this is work in progress. Michael and I and Scott are working to try to perfect what you have in front of you. But it gives you a snapshot rather than the 27 pages that are attached to uh, your agenda today. Um, uh, point out the debt service. That is a annual number of 888319 versus what we spent last year. We're going to try to perfect that a little better so there is some relationship to the amount of debt we actually have versus the debt service. But um, we took some of the feedback from our last meeting. And again, if you have feedback this time, I'm more than happy to do that um, and try to perfect um, a snapshot of our financial uh, condition uh, for our meetings uh, on a monthly basis. So again, uh, the comments at the bottom are, are pretty boilerplate from last month. They're have been no modifications to that. But again, I just got this presented to me a few minutes ago, so um, we've been working on it for the last few days. So, so. anyway. Thank you, Jim. Thank Any you. questions for Jim? <clears throat> no? 
Yes, Jessica. I've got a request. This yes. looks great, by the way. But as we're coming up to on budget season, could next month uh, brief, brief the council on overlay fund, what that is, how it works, and all that stuff? Because I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Overlay. 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 If you could give us a briefing on the overlay fund. Sure. At okay. the next. Not a problem. Thank you. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, next is citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anybody here? No. Okay. Then we'll move on to the town manager's monthly report. Michael. Yes, uh, next, yeah. I just want to join in, in acknowledging the great work of the Department of Public Works and Police Department, the Fire Department, uh, you know, the building inspection. Everyone seems to be involved in some way in dealing with the weather. Uh, uh, really, really, all the departments, one way or another, uh, facilities, and you know, even you know, we contract out for like the sidewalks at Town Hall and uh, on the school grounds uh, through Skip Murray. And those folks, I think, have done a great job as well. You know, I think you know, it, it's it's a trying time for everyone. Uh, I I can't remember a time when we've had so many storms in, in quick succession and. Uh, you know, those of us that are in the building here and the heat goes out, that's one problem. But, you know, you look at the, the oil delivery people, the, the, the letter carriers, mail delivery folks, and, uh, all those that are outside, I uh, really appreciate that they're continuing to serve our community. Uh, you know, even if they don't work for the town uh, directly, uh, everyone's, it, everyone's really pitching in. And I, I'm, I have my strong sympathy as well for the superintendent of schools uh, having to make that decision. Uh, <laughs> every day as well and uh, you know with everyone wondering will there be school or not so uh, anyway it's it's been a trying time and secondly I do want uh, Neil Williams chief of police is here and knows I'm going to embarrass him uh, there was a uh, banquet a week ago Saturday of the main association of police and uh, Neil Neil was there and his wife was there and they invited me there and the, the, the reason we were all there and about every officer who wasn't working uh, was that they named Neil the um, police chief of the year. Uh, and they said very nice things about him, including that he would shovel the sidewalks uh, if, if they hadn't been shoveled. And you know, it was, it was a, it was a well-deserved honor. And you know, there were, there were a number of standing ovations that evening, but it, it, uh, that was the first one, I believe, uh, where everyone stood up and you know, really acknowledged uh, you know, what, what a great person he is, as well as uh, what a great chief he is for our department. So, it, it was a very nice event. Italian Heritage did a good job as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, really, I think it's just a, a good indication of uh, how well respected he is. And th this, this particular award came about when he, he was to be, to receive it, you need to be nominated by the offices in your department, and or at least one of them who takes the effort to put together the, the nomination form. And, so I think that's that's a credit to to Neil as well. The fact that he was nominated for the new crown. So I know you all. <laughs> the council stood. I did. You know, <laughs> he stood at the last. I stood at the last time. <laughs> So thank you. Oh, thank you, Michael. It's good to see, uh, Neil, that somebody else turns red like I do. <laughs> okay, moving on to the uh, review of the draft minutes of January 12th. Um, is there a motion to accept? I Jessica. So move. <coughs> I so move. Thank you, Jessica. Is there a second? Molly, thank you. Uh, discussion, changes, errors, emissions? Mm -hmm. No, okay. All in favor? Any opposed? No. Uh, can I mention one more thing? Uh, Molly mentioned that I was going to say something about the library, and then it just and, you did. and then I did so just so that no Certainly. one's left. But, but what she was referring to is that uh, there's the connector between the two buildings, and there's a section of the connector that's closest to the old Sperman School where the library now is that's no longer there, and that's in getting ready for what should have happened a day or two ago because the weather it hasn't is that. The new temporary entrance to the Sperman School is going to be right there where the connector would have been in the way. So there was this supposed to tear down the rest of the connector plus the back half of the old library. Again, 
any day now, but any day now it keeps getting put out because the, the folks that do that are also people who plow driveways and, right. and shopping center parking lots and the rest of it. But you know, the, the, the weather is affecting the library schedule somewhat, but they didn't expect to get a whole lot done uh, right now anyway. But uh, the good news is the library is open. It's, people are dealing with it. Uh, it's, it's not ideal, but it's, it's, uh, it's better than no library at all. Right. So, but anyway, yeah, that, that's the, that's the mystery. So the mystery doesn't stay. And it does look demo. pretty interesting being able to stand in front of the Spurwink School and look through that opening where the connector used to be because that connector's been there since 1985. <laughs> Nobody has seen through there in whatever, that's been 30 years, long time. And, and that will remain open because right. the new building isn't going to be connected to the old building and there's gonna be a nice plaza there that's yes. what was welcoming the schools, just a whole new feel. Thank you for allowing me to return to that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I know. I think Molly was kind of going, whoop, whoop. Right. <laughs> I noticed you sort of paused, and I thought, why was you pausing? Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So moving on to uh, the next item, 34, 2015, the Winnix Woods New Trail Request. Um, Get this one at the bottom, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yep. sorry, thank you. 33, 2015, request to extend deadline of planning board review of special events ordinance. Uh, Jamie, did you want to cover that? Yeah, sure. So uh, thank you. that we need to spend some time talking about um, giving more direction to the planning board on this issue. Um, so what we've suggested is that we remove their deadline that we had currently given them and kind of have it open-ended until we have a workshop on, workshop on it and send it back to them. Is that consistent with what your, remember Michael? Mm -hmm. Is that consistent with your recollection? I, I don't know all the, de the details of it, but if that's what you'd like to do, that's fine. Yeah, that, that's what I propose. So, so does this have to be amended? Because it looks like it's just extending the deadline, but Council Wagner just asked for a workshop yeah. in the meantime to give them more direction. Yeah, I, I think it's to to waive. I think the action would be to waive the March 31, 2015 the dead. deadline. Then leaves it open. Just leave it open without scheduling a workshop. Well, I, I would I would like that we have a, you know include that on our next agenda for the next workshop. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is that a motion you'd like to make? Uh, if it's necessary, I don't know if we need to make a motion put it on the agenda. But. Well, in terms of um, this, this motion, I'll make this motion. Yeah, yeah. Wait, the uh, yeah, yeah. I move uh, to approve item 33, 2015. To waive the deadline. To waive the deadline. Okay. And is there a second? Seconded. Thank you, Jim. Discussion? Questions? No? Okay. All in favor? Any opposed? No. Great. Now I'll move on <laughs> to 34, 2015, the Winnix Woods. New trail request. Um, who would be doing that? Yes, sir. Thank you. So my name is Mitch Waxman. I'm the chairman of the Conservation Commission, and um, I'll just give you a brief sort of overview of what we're doing and why. Um, as you see on the map, we have a small area. Thank you, Maureen. Oh, cool. That's okay. So the situation that we have is that um, a new subdivision that was built at Eastman Meadows, we acquired some uh, land that we built a nice trail on that is a multi-use trail that people are likely snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, biking, walking dogs. Um, and that comes very, very close to some existing trails in the Winnick Woods network. So where you see the mouse is a small um, pond with an RP1 and RP2 wetland nearby. And we would like to make a connection between those two trails. And in thinking about that, um, we consulted with, I guess the town engineer, is that the right term? Who advised us that he thought we would need um, a state permit and hopefully it would be available to go in the permit by rule category. And we were, we would like to hear or I guess we would like to propose um, that we put in this permit. It will be funded. Uh, we've been given a sort of matching funds out of our, con our Conservation Commission budget 
and also from the New England Mountain Bike Association um, to complete the work. So that would cover both the permit and then actually putting in the trail and it'll require probably 100 feet of boardwalk to complete. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Waxman? Jessica. So the, the, the approval of the council is needed in order to request the permit. Submit the permit. permit. So submit, I'm sorry, to submit the permit. Yeah. So we know we need the permit. Yeah. And now we need to know if, we're, if we can do that. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Yes, Jamie. How you doing? Good. Um, any opposition that you've heard to this proposal? No. I mean, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that it's, it's getting some casual use currently, um, and it's kind of degrading that area. It, it, you know, it is kind of wet, and there is a pond there. So we either need to fix it appropriately or do something more drastic to keep people out of there. So. Other questions? No. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we have before us the request, so I guess we would be looking for a motion to accept. To authorize the application. To authorize the application. Thank you, Michael. Jessica. I move that we authorize the application uh, to install, is it for the permit or the trail? The permit. For the permit. For the permit. Okay. And to install and to authorize the trail. To, that we authorize the permit and also the uh, installation of new trail at Winnick Woods Conservation Area. Thank you, Jessica. Jim? Seconded. Thank you, Jim. Any more discussion? Any questions? <clears throat> okay. All in favor? None opposed. Great. Thank, hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the next item is 35 2015 Paper Streets. Um, and we all received something in the mail, I assume. Fairly large. Um, and um, Maureen is here to, I guess, present it, yes? Yes, M Maureen's ready to do a presentation, but it, it is recommended that this be referred to a workshop as it takes time. We'd also like to have at that workshop here with Parkinson and have an executive session during that workshop for a small piece of it uh, so that you, you get advice from him as well on some of the uh, challenging issues with paper streets. Great. And did you want to make a presentation? Hmm? Unless there are questions, I have no remarks I need to yeah, make. I, we, we had a discussion earlier, and that was, I'm not trying to cut her off, that was the, <laughs> the, the, the understanding was there was no sense in going over it twice. She was very enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to go home too. <laughs> so um, the item is to refer it to a workshop? Is refer that... it to a workshop. Okay. So, yes, Jim? Um, I move that we, on item uh, 35, 2015, that we move the Paper Street question to a future town council workshop meeting, at which time our attorney will address us as well. Great. Thank you, Jim. Is there a second? Molly? Thank you. I'll second that. Uh, questions? Jamie? Yeah, just maybe, I don't know if it's so much a question as a request. I thought if Maureen might be able to provide if possible, you know, a map of the town that has kind of just spots where each one of these is for the workshop. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Other questions? Requests? One, a single map. A single Total map, yeah. Single. All right. Great. So, all in favor? None opposed. Great. Thank you. We will move on to political signs on traffic islands. Um, I assume maybe Jamie wanted to present this? Yes, sure. Thank you. Yes, so the ordinance committee met on this issue and based on legal counsel and consensus of the ordinance committee, we voted to uh, unanimously to remove the prohibition on political signs um, on traffic islands, um, although we agreed to retain the six weeks time limit on political signs. And we think that makes the most sense given First Amendment law. So that's what we propose to the council. Okay. And did you want to make that a motion? Yeah. So I move that we approve, um, well, actually, the motion is that we refer um, 
this proposal to amend the ordinance to a public hearing on Monday, March 9th, 2015. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Jessica. I second. Thank you. Caitlin? I note just for purposes of disclosure, um, my family has a sign on a traffic island, but it's not a political sign. It's an agricultural sign. So as just for our new code of conduct, rules of ethics, whatever we labeled them, I can't remember, just to disclose that. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Jamie? I just state, and following up on Caitlin's uh, comment, that we discussed that at the ordinance committee level as well. Good. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay. All in favor? None opposed. Okay. Um, item 37 2015 speed limits in town center area and on Shore Road at the South Portland line. Um, yes, Councilor Brennan, did you want to address this? Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, so this evening, uh, as a result of the town center plan, I guess what I'd like to do is um, I've been asked or tasked as part of um, our goals to uh, resolve some of the unfinished goals from the town center plan. So I wanted to ask the council to consider potentially uh, making a request to the Maine Department of Transportation, um, also known as MDOT, to reduce the speed limit in Cape Elizabeth on two separate roadways. Um, the first is in town center um, on Route 77 from Hillway, which is just down uh, going north to Portland beyond the Cumberland Farms on the left, kind of by the Welcome to Cape Elizabeth sign, all the way through town center, past the high school uh, to Fowler Road. Um, the current speed is 35 miles per hour during this stre uh, stretch, and the request would be to, for a change in status from an arterial to a lesser classification, therefore um, giving it a lower speed. Um, the second request is for a lesser speed limit um, on Shore Road near South Portland Line uh, specifically in front of Ann Veronica uh, clothing store and that we're kind of lopping it into the same area and that came from a, um, a citizen. Um, so let me give you a little bit of background um, before we go forward is um, in regard to the town center. Um, the council approved the town center plan in October 2014. Uh, there were seven goals in the plan, one of which was number two, um, which states the desire to, quote unquote, recast Route 77 in the town center as Cape Elizabeth's Main Street. Um, the town center committee that was tasked with developing this plan envisioned uh, Cape's Main Street as one with um, increased pedestrian flow, uh, with, um, with sidewalks that go along, along lining the streets, with building standards in our town that move new construction closer to the road, um, and as I said, sidewalks and as well, um, a town center green. Um, all these area, <coughs> these main street ideas are part of the plan, but um, and all related in a way through our town center, but the, the, what we'll discuss today is uh, specifically uh, addressing the idea of um, a reduce in the speed limit to slow traffic down. Um, Regarding background on the second request, um, was for a reduction on the speed limit on Shore Road at the South Portland line, specifically in front of Ann Veronica Clothing Store. Um, Ann, Veronica, um, Ann Perino, owner of Ann Veronica, um, has, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, um, wanted to, has made a request and for about a year now has been asking the town to slow traffic in front of that area, the business district down there. Um, it's, if you've been there, it's kind of a, it's a narrow, um, street that goes right past her store. There's parking on both sides, which the parking has to remain there. Um, there's an increase in pedestrian traffic going into her store, and people are, are going through, I think the, um, uh, Neil will tell us what the speed limit is, but um, you know they're, they're going through at a good clip there. Um, so I know that Mike had told me today that we, we've thought about doing crosswalks there, just like we have here in town, the center things, and those cannot be done. Um, so that's kind of the background on that. Um, so what we're asking for, and I guess we'll have some dialogue around this, um, is to consider possibly these speed limit changes. But in the meantime, wanted to have, um, we invited uh, Neil Williams, Chief Neil Williams, to come here from the police department um, to brief the council on both kind of the quantitative um, as well as observational data that he's gathered, um, specifically to speed 
and pedestrians and um, <coughs> traveled by you know, cars in this area. So, Neil? Yes, uh, I was asked uh, to give an unbiased opinion and a recommendation, and that's what I did. So um, I'd like to take the uh, Shore Road and South Portland Line first. Um, and uh, what I did here was uh, I got some information provided by uh, Chief Guggins at the uh, South Portland Police Department. Um, consulted him after he uh, looked, reviewed his data. Um, it should be noted that there's a, a name change. Uh, Shore Road at Cape Elizabeth is it's named Shore Road at the Cape Elizabeth line. At the South Portland line, it turns into Cottage Road, just so you know. But the whole length and the whole length of Shore Road actually out to the center of town is uh, 30 miles an hour. Um, on the South Portland side uh, of the line, uh, Chief Guggen said that they had issued 12 summonses along that stretch of the roadway between Sawyer, uh, most of them more up by Sawyer Road, um, not by the Cape Elizabeth Town Line. Sp a speed survey was completed at the South Portland Line uh, by Cape Elizabeth, uh, in which 350 vehicles were clocked with radar. The high speed clock of any vehicle through there was 37 miles per hour, and the lowest speed was 19 miles per hour. The average speed of all those vehicles was 28.26 miles per hour. In the last three years, South Portland handled four crashes on their side of the line, but all were at Cliff Avenue, which is around the corner from the South Portland line. On the Cape Elizabeth side of the town line, we handled three crashes during 2011 and 2013, and that's from MDOT. And, and all those crashes were at uh, this intersection up here, which is Charles Road and Shore Road. Pedestrian traffic was brought out, uh, also brought up to me as a concern at the town line. There is a marked pedestrian crossing on the Cape Elizabeth side of the line, and uh, the end of the sidewalk is next to a parking lot. Uh, the report was vehicles were not stopping for pedestrians in the crosswalk. Uh, this crossing was observed during the summer hours by myself. Uh, we've had several different calls to this particular area. Uh, primarily by the same uh, business and so at this particular time in the summertime which I thought was the busiest time I went down there personally um, three three different times for an hour um, and only saw three people cross the road at that time and they were all coming from South Portland into Cape Elizabeth I assume going down to the fort and at that particular time of those hours of days I didn't see any problem. They crossed uh, with no problem. The edge-to-edge -edge pavement, pavement in that area by the town line is 34 to 35 feet. Therefore, this area is narrow for vehicular traffic, especially if vehicles are parked along the side of the road at uh, the businesses. My observations, the speed surveys that were conducted in this area do not indicate a speed issue. Matter of fact, when vehicles are parked along the side of the road, it seems to act as a visual speed deterrent because the road is narrow to begin with. The pedestrian crossing is in such a location that installing markings is near impossible. And um, if you can recall the town center, we have those lights that flash, pedestrians push them. And there is no area that those can be installed currently at this particular crossing down there. Um, a pedestrian sign in the middle of the roadway would not be safe, in my opinion. Should vehicles park along this, this stretch of roadway, it would not allow travel, uh, travel lane wide enough for large vehicles to get through. And we all know that buses travel through there in the summertime to go to the fort. The trolley uh, comes through there, the motorized trolley. And if you put something in the middle of the roadway and then had vehicles park on the side of the roadway, I feel you'd have a problem. I do have some photographs that I took. Uh, they're probably not professional, but uh, I did take them, and I can show you um, where you can observe where it, it, it does appear to be it, too close. Uh, recommendation, crash data and speed surveys do not indicate an issue with the speed in this area. The area is too narrow to, to place a pedestrian side in the road, sign in the roadway. In conversations with the police chief in South Portland, we do not feel a reduction of the speed limit in this area is war warranted. However, should the council wish to uh, contact MDOT and have a review 
of course, you may do so. One option to consider could be to restrict parking on one side of Shore Road in this area. By doing this, it would give more visibility for operators of vehicles to see pedestrians waiting to enter the crosswalk. The other option would be to look at the feasibility to reconstruct the area of a crosswalk or re relocate the crosswalk to a better area. Now, I don't know if the uh, area could be over the line in South Portland. The line is right there, which I will show you. Um, I did not contact the businesses to see what their um, reaction would be to um, putting either side or one side no parking, but I can tell you that um, it would really restrict those businesses should we restrict parking in that area. <coughs> that would be the town, the Shore Road one. If you want to check the pictures, I can show you. The only pedestrian sign that we have um, that, that says there's a pedestrian crosswalk ahead, which was a safe enough place to put, was this particular yellow one that's right at the corner of Preble Street and um, Shore Road. Here's, a, here's a, another picture that goes down through. You can see where this car parked on the right-hand side of the road heading into South Portland. And that small vehicle, it looks like a Honda or something, is trying, trying to go by. And you can see it's taking up most of the width of that roadway. Or, or that lane, I should say. Here's two vehicles coming from the other side. I wish, I wish you could see it from this computer because it's a lot more graphic. But, um, and here's another one where I think gives a, a, a better indication of having a vehicle coming from South Portland and having a vehicle parked on the side of the roadway. It doesn't really give you too much space in that particular area. Here's, I'm sorry. Um, could, could you tell us where the town line is in relation yes, to those I'm, pictures? Give me a second. Yep, I actually yep. took a picture of the pictures of that. Okay, and I'll sure. Show you. Thank you. Um, here's the crosswalk. Here's the end that um, goes up to the sidewalk and ends technically in that little parking lot next to the building. And here's the other side of where it ends on the sidewalk. There's a picture uh, headed down towards Cookie Jar, Charles Road. You can see the 30 mile an hour speed limit on your right hand side. There's a car, another car going by Charles Road, that intersection. Here's uh, two vehicles on the side of the roadway, one on either side, and a vehicle coming through. Um, I think you can see also that it would be rather tight in that particular area. There's one going by. That granite marker in the middle next to the uh, post, uh, white post, that is your town line. There it says CE on one side and SP on the other. <laughs> and as you see it, it's right there. And that line, although I can't show you, but technically goes diagonal through Ann Veronica. <laughs> So the, the street facing part of the Ann Veronica business is actually in South Portland? Yes. Okay. <coughs> so that's your Shore Road and um, South Portland line. Just, just to my you know, the, the other challenge is usually when one parks, you can open your door and there's nothing to block it. Because of the elevated sidewalk, if you park there, you have to, if you have a passenger, you have to park far enough away so that you can still open the door because of, it's, it's the old trolley platform from the uh, right. 1930s. Yeah, I was going to say that the, I believe that used to be a hotel mm -hmm. and a long time ago when the trolley stopped there and so the sidewalk there is so elevated because it, so I think that was the location of what they call a right. nickel limit that if you went to that point you paid a nickel and if you continued on the trolley to Fort Williams it was some additional amount, but I know my family, they used to go come from Portland, my grandparents, and they didn't have much money, and they get off the trolley at the nickel limit and walk, walked. <laughs> walked the rest of the way. But what I wanted to show you, if you take a look, at, go back to this picture, what I was, what I was uh, trying to get at in uh, my brief description was, if you have a vehicle on either side of the road like that, um, especially the vehicle that's on the left side of this picture facing Cape Elizabeth, there is no way that a vehicle coming, that vehicle right there, could see that a pedestrian was getting ready to start that crosswalk. 
And therefore, I think some of the complaints that we may get, it's true. If, if, if you were driving down through there, you wouldn't see it. So therefore, you didn't stop for the pedestrian in the crosswalk, but you didn't see it. So that's, I feel, why we're getting some of the complaints. Would you want to do the shore over? Sure. Uh, that would be the 77. Just one quick Do you have any recommendations for where we could relocate the crosswalk? It, I, I, I would actually leave that to, to Bob, and I hate to throw him under the bus here, but he knows how, how much room it takes. Because mm -hmm. I would think that if you're going to relocate the, the crosswalk, the best thing to do would also to try to be putting in some black and white. Mm -hmm. And he would know. Uh, how much room that would take, I would know. I know that he's told me that there is not enough room in its current location to do that. Okay. Okay. Can you help me? Maureen's going to help me get to the... Caitlin, it would probably have to be in South Portland. Either come that's, my, yeah. that's my guess. That's what I'm saying. Either go one way or the other. Driveways. Yeah. 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 And can you collaborate with South Portland uh, regarding that? Can you collaborate with, would you collaborate with South Portland regarding putting in a crosswalk on their side? Absolutely. But and they'd be amenable to that? Uh, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't talked to uh, Chief Guggins about it or, okay. or who would fit the, thought, put, fit the bill on that one. So. Yeah. But uh, on to Shore Road. I mean, I mean, on to 77, <clears throat> from Hillway to Fowler Road, mm -hmm. I was asked to, to do the same thing, to give an uh, independent uh, look-see at this, and I did. Uh, called MDOT and got crash data uh, for this particular uh, area, and the same as the 2011 to 2013, that's the crash data that they sent us. Um, the stretch of roadway is now uh, posted by MDOT at 35 miles per hour. The speed details conducted by our department were in the town center along town hallway and crossing the IGA. A total of 589 vehicles were clocked. Of the 589, the highest speed recorded was 47 and the lowest 21. The average of all the vehicles that traveled through there was 31.52 miles per hour. Crash data acquired from MDOT shows that the intersection of 77 Shore Road, Scott Dyer during 2011-2013 is classified as a high crash area. This intersection had a total of nine crashes during this time period. Of the nine crashes at the intersection, seven of those were property damage only. All of the crashes were during daylight hours with six of the crashes right at the intersection of the establishment at that particular time was Jonesy's on the run. The establishment is now changed to Cumberland Farms. The intersection of Route 77 and the Pond Cove shopping area is also classi classified by MDOT as a high crash area. In turn, this area has also had nine crashes at the above uh, time period. One of the crashes, though, was a car deer, and four were rear-end crashes, all nine crashes were property damage only. Observations were the area of roadway in Route 77 between Hillway and Fowler Road has a large volume of traffic daily, especially when schools are beginning or ending for the day and when there is uh, an event in the community, for example, voting days, beach to beacon, or holidays. Speed does not appear to be a large factor here. The high crash areas do not appear the result of speeding motor vehicles. However, in looking at the data I've got, it, it's more so inattentive drivers and questionable turning movements. From the speed surveys completed, it shows that the average speed is less than 32 miles per hour in a 35 zone. With that being said, the town center will be growing due to recent land purchases, and with that come more vehicle traffic and increase pedestrian traffic. At this time, we now have pedestrian traffic that currently does not utilize the current marked pedestrian crossings to access Cumberland Farms from, from the Scott Dyer Road area, and I have a picture of that. Uh, the area from Cumberland Farms does not even allow pedestrian crossing because there is no sidewalk on the store side uh, to receive the crosswalk. 
The town center section of Route 77 is also very wide. With the inclusion of the bike lanes, edge-to-edge -edge pavement is in the range of 40 feet wide. Having this width, width gives the appearance to drivers that there is plenty of room to go to the right of the vehicle when it's turning. It appears that this width allows more turning movements and passing movements, which is the causation factor for the nine accidents in that particular area, or of the 18 accidents in the two high crash areas that we have. Recommendation for the future of the town center, a discussion may want to take place to have MDOT review the 35 miles an hour. And that is just a recommendation to review it, if you wish, because the feeling, I, I believe, is, is that there's a high pedestrian traffic in this area, and MDOT may take a look at that and say they want it lowered. They may leave it the same. I don't know. But they also uh, would be willing to look at pedestrian movements. I know Maureen's been in contact with them, and uh, they're more than welcome to look at the way pedestrians uh, go from side to side on, the, on this particular roadway. Uh, that would be it. Uh, I'd like to just show you a couple of pictures, unless there's any questions right up front. Yes. On the Pond Co, um, crash site area, Pond intersection of 77, I'm sorry, in the Pond Co Shopping Center? Yes. Is that each entrance or one in particular? One by the IGA or the other one closer to the police department? It, it didn't say in the crash data. I think it was more so down by the... Um, by the IGA. Let's call it the, I don't know if it's called the main, but more closer to the community services side. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, here you just have a couple of vehicles going through, but it also shows that the area uh, has the pedestrian sign that flashes, and it also has the uh, sign in the middle of the roadway. Here you see, here's you see a car turning right. It's going to go into, which now is Cumberland Farms. You see a vehicle turning left on the Scott Day Road. You see one, I assume, is going straight ahead because they don't have any turn in. Here's one coming out of Shore Road with a vehicle behind it. This one's quite interesting. I wish, I wish you could see this computer, but if you look up over the side view mirror of this vehicle, you can see a head. And then if you look at this one, you can't see it, but if you look over the pedestrian sign, you'll see that there's about five U's that have just crossed the road not using the pedestrian sign, and that's where they, the pedestrian crosswalk, and that's where we're having a little bit of a problem here. Here you just got more vehicles that are turning into, into uh, Cumberland Farms. This is the intersection from the both of the intersections that you had related to from the Pond Cove uh, parking er uh, shopping area. And you can see that just the movement of traffic, um, car coming out of the area, this uh, second car that's uh, going uh, south has is, is got his blinker on to turn. You've got other vehicles coming through the intersection. Very busy intersection. I, I wish I had remembered what time of day I took this picture. But I don't. This is in front of the uh, town hall. And those are, the, those are the pictures in the area. L like I said, though, you can see that the width with the uh, bike lanes uh, makes it quite wide, and that's why people feel and can, in, in, in for the most part, you couldn't, you couldn't tonight, that's for sure, with all the snow on the side of the roadway, but uh, when it's, when it's uh, hot, dry, and dusty, you can get through there. Molly? Neil, I have a quick question, two quick questions. Is it the volume of traffic on that road that makes it an arterial? Is that, the, is that what the defining term is for I think it's, I think it's how, and, and, and Maureen can correct me, but I think it's how you get through the center of town. You know, you get from one point, point A to point B. And, and because it's an arterial, that's why the speed limit is set at 35 and not at... 25, let's it's, it's been set at 35 because MDOT looked at it and it's not, not I, I think that's one of the, one of their, what they call warrants or factors that they take uh, into uh, play here and they look at that and say, this is supposed to move 
vehicles from point A to point B, this roadway. Jim. When the, uh, I think it was Sarah Lennon um, chaired the sort of the calming, pedestrian calming issues in the town center, that crosswalk that was determined that you mentioned here was part of that process. I guess I wonder, was there any discussion back then, because both Cumberland Farms and Jonesy's were in existence, of moving that um, crosswalk, if you will, down further, which is where you say you're having the problem today. I do not know if that conversation never even, took place. As far as you know, I never I even. Not. Okay. I know that um, um, the criteria for a crosswalk is not met in that particular area because it had, doesn't have a landing area. You can't take a crosswalk into that particular uh, flow of traffic into that um, Cumberland Farms that way. That mm -hmm. MDOT doesn't look at that as a feasible place to put a crosswalk. The way it's designed right now. Sure. Okay, so there would have to be a design change in order to get I, sure I, would, I would believe so, because they can't do it now, so they do it okay. later. But Interesting. If you, if you notice the key bank, there's this little tiny piece of sidewalk yeah. there. Yeah. That had to be put in in order to allow the crosswalk to win, because it needed to have a place to land. Because that was part of shore, the shore path as well. We came right to that intersection. But that little piece of sidewalk was in first before the shore road sidewalk. Yeah, so I remember it being about four thousand dollars or something like that, or whatever. Well, yeah, they they put in the, the crosswalk, the flashers, the, that little piece of sidewalk plus the signs in there. Yeah. Okay. He the needs center. a tip down for ADA, I believe, also. Yeah. It was. It needs needs a they call it a tip down for tip down with the with a with those sort of polka dots or whatever you call them on there for for but touch for this touch pad. We installed it new, so we put the yes. tip down in. It yes. Yes. You did. You also, you don't need those those little bubbles now. Yeah, yeah it's like a touch pad, yeah. isn't it? For, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Jim. Yeah, I know that one of the proposals of the Town Center Planning Committee was talking about sidewalks that might go down towards the Methodist Church. So that would be a potential place to put a crosswalk. Yeah. You know, in the future, if we go that direction. Hmm. Yeah. So, Interesting. I think the, the council did approve the TIF district a while ago. But it hoped that that generates some monies to uh, to do that. And that's almost ready to be approved by the state fund. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. They take a while. Any other questions for Chief Williams? Anything I forgot to add? No, I think you hit all of the major points to consider as crosswalks are integrated with the speed. And anything else? Great, thanks. Oh, Jessica. While we have Chief Williams here, it's slightly off topic, but it's related. I um, have noticed what I think are a lot of <coughs> near misses uh, at the new Cumberland Farms, because I think of the volume of people buying gas there now that there's only one place to buy gas. And I don't know if, if the police department has observed any of this or not, but I'm now well, it's cheaper in South Portland at the moment anyway, but I am now <laughs> not buying my gas there anymore because I don't, was myself almost hit twice. And so I just, I'm not going there anymore. I, I, I don't, don't have any stock in Cumberland Farms, but I know that because the price has been reduced with that 10 cents, that a lot of people have been talking about it and going there. What the problem we have right now is with those high snow banks, it's just cross my fingers every time I go by there. But um, there is a lot of in and out traffic. I know that your um, workers during the noon hour uh, like that area. We've been on them because they've been parking too close to the intersections and, uh, or the intersection going in, I should say, drive-ins, and we've had to move them out of there. Uh, we actually asked them to park across the street and walk across without the crosswalk. <laughs> Other questions? So I guess um, what's in front of us is about the council sending a letter to the, to the MDOT. Um, so did you want to make a proposal for that, Patty? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think it's, um, we can make a motion and then have some conversation, either vote it up or down. Um, 
what I heard um, regarding 77 um, from Chief Williams is that he recommend that we have MDOT review um, that stretch of area for both speed and pedestrian movements, you know, and that would give us um, um, some feedback. I think, and Maureen, maybe you'd know, we, you can apply for a petition then for that information. You don't, is it necessarily that they would come? If you did apply for that and make some changes, can you speak to that? If we did petition it, is it yeah. you have to live by what happens? You know, planners have been talking about this for a while, and in my planning circles, we're finding that we used to petition to MDOT and ask them to reduce speed, and in some cases, they have not only refused to reduce speed, but they've actually asked for the speed to go up. So we were kind of cautious about even asking for that. Nevertheless, the town center plan does say that we should be looking at lower speeds because this is like a main street. So I do think you can, you can make the case, not just based on speed, but on based on the steps the town has taken with your zoning and the congestion of uses and your pedestrian friendly approach. So I did uh, speak to Dan Stewart, who used to be the bicycle and pedestrian coordinator at MDOT. And he got on the phone with me and he pulled the new pedestrian coordinator and they were looking on aerials and they were speculating on where we might be able to put um, crosswalks. So yes, there is some potential here to maybe to add some crosswalks. Um, the trick is not to put them where they're not going to be safe. And MDOT has rules about, you know, we, we don't want to put a crosswalk so that it's too far back from the intersection, because that's not where cars are looking for pedestrians. So if you're making a turn, and you've already finished a turn, and all of a sudden there's a crosswalk, that's where the concern is. And, you know, it's, I'm kind of waving here a little, but the challenge with this intersection has always been that it's a dogleg intersection. It's not like this, it's like this. Um, and where our youths are crossing is at a very wide part of Route 77 um, where you might be able to start the crosswalk on a corner at Scott Dyer Road, but it won't land at the corner on Shore Road. It'll land midway through. Um, so that, that, I have serious concerns about that from a design perspective. And on the phone with Dan Stewart, we were kind of speculating about maybe uh, moving this intersect, this crosswalk we have here a little closer to Shore Road and then um, trying to really encourage people to cross at this point and then over Shore Road to get to Cumberland Farms. And, you know, if we did do that, we probably really would need to do some outreach to the schools and maybe get some uh, students involved in understanding why that's the safer way to go. But um, as for you know, MDOT being able to let us put in crosswalks here, if all we're doing is talking about paint, he didn't seem to think it was going to be that big a deal. Uh, if we have to redesign the intersection and do construction, then it's, it's a huge, enormous project. The other concern I had was that there was a time when MDOT had rules on what your maximum speed could be to even consider a crosswalk. Um, the town had petitioned for a crosswalk down by Rudy's and had been turned down because of the speed. Um, MDOT has just changed the rules on that, and um, even at 35 miles an hour, we could still look at putting some crosswalks in here. I don't know if that answers your question. Michael? Yeah, I just wanted, you know, I can remember a discussion a few months ago about safety and wanting to do some certain things. And I'm not going to say what I said back then, but, uh, you know, I think, you know, the, as the council has expressed this concern about safety, in that whole corridor, particularly with all the, the activity at the new Cumberland Mines. And I think it would be really good to have them uh, take a look at this, take a look at the speed. I think it's, I, I can't see them raising it. If they do, you know, we, 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 you know, we can go say hello to the governor, I suppose. Uh, uh, but, you know, there's just, I just think about it. Okay, so would you like to make a motion about sending a letter to MDOT? Yeah, sure. I think um, there's some wording here that you might be able to use. Yeah, let's see here. Um, let's see. I'd like to move that the town of Cape Elizabeth or, or council uh, petition MDOT for um, a review for speed and pedestrian movements um, and potentially a reduction of the speed limit at town center from Hillway Road to Fowler Road. 
Thank you. Is there a second? Jessica? A second. Thank you. Further discussion? Jessica. Um, I, I may be, this may be a point of order. I wanted to ask something else about, it's not related to the motion on the table though. It, I, I wanted to discuss the Shore Road area. So I should wait. To make a motion. Yeah. Come after. Yes. Yep. All right. Any other questions about the motion? All right. All in favor? None opposed. Jessica. Okay. Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, read, read the material in advance and um, from the discussion tonight, I'm not in favor of asking for any review of Shore Road, the, the area at the end of the, near the South Portland line. Okay. Does anybody else want to pursue that? I, I, sorry, I'd be interested in just having a conversation with South Portland as to whether or not we can relocate the crosswalk. I mean, if that's, I mean, it seems to be, if it's not a huge, you know, deal, if it's going to change the safety, because it does seem to be a problem if you have cars parked there, and if it's possible to move it just a, you know, 20 feet in either direction, that would improve visibility and the ability to cross. It's worth a conversation is all. Molly? A uh, quick question for Mike on that. Is that the $4,000 kind of project that we were talking about here at the corner of Shore Road, or is it just painting on the It would pavement? be similar. It's, it's a little more complicated because it's in South Portland. And we, we also, you, you get Woodbury there, you know, as, as Neil said, you want a crosswalk close to where there's intersecting streets so that people come at them. But the other real issue is on the other side where, where Woodland comes down, you come out of Woodland and there's a rock outcropping yeah. and it's a really blind spot. It is. Um, yeah. So you know, it might have to be quite a, you know, the next block down mm -hmm. in South Portland uh, to, to make it a little bit safer because that, that if you've ever come out of uh, Woodland there, it's ex I think that's probably where we're getting accidents is or it, they, actually they'd be South Portland would get them because uh, it, it is really dangerous uh, trying to get out of there and take a left turn. So if you move that down though, does it then only need you to be move painted it or does it need the flashing lights and the $4,000? Well, that's what we'd want to look at is, you know, I, I think what, what the owner of the, the business is, is looking to maximize it. But you, know, but you can do things in stages. You can first, let's put a crosswalk in, uh, see how that, you know, works see if people are observant of it and if they're not observant of it that is when you begin to up you know upgrade to putting in the the flashers now obviously not every intersection has those flashing lights right. uh, who, who decides that does that come from us in the community or well, mdot is not in this case in it would be the city of south portland because it's it's in there, it, on their it's side. in this it's in the city but not mdot hmm? not mdot uh they yeah, th those would be municipal decisions, and you know, South Portland might, since we're looking for it, you know, I don't know. I, you know South Portland has its budget challenges too. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Jessica, then Jim. Yeah. Well, I just was going to kind of ask similar questions. I mean, this is really South Portland, and not Cape Elizabeth. We're talking about. <coughs> but we I do think safety is very important. But I, I don't know yeah. how, how, and I'm sure you know how one would coordinate a concern. But we we speak with South Portland. It's uh, <laughs> a fine neighbor, and uh, all the municipal officials get along just great. So, Jim, uh, I'll go to uh, Chief Williams' comment earlier that he indicated that the businesses in this section have not been brought into this discussion, and I would be concerned about representing something to South Portland that there isn't the sort of willingness of on the part of the businesses that are directly affected. Uh, I would hate to have you go ahead and agree to something that they would find not conducive to good business or good practice. I mean, I, I just, right. I, I'm all for, for, we've had enough experience with the folks who live in this small section between Charles Road and the town line in the past okay. in terms of dealing with Tara that I would hate to have us go forward with a plan like this without some input from that group. That's all. You know. We could probably call a meeting someday and meet in the fire station meeting room of, you know, the chief, myself, and yep. invite uh, South Portland representatives. Yeah. Great. So, M Michael, do you want to take that as something that we'd, you would follow through with, or whatever the council would like? Okay. Does somebody want to make a motion about that? 
Okay. Um, this is before I'd say much. We can have a dialogue about putting in the crosswalk, which is simple. I don't think we're talking about restricting traffic on each side. Um, so I think it's a, a much lesser concern. I guess I would, to your point, um, Jim, would be, um, so I think, I think just having the dialogue, and certainly we don't have to enact anything, right? right? If there's any type of recommendation. So I think it's at least worth taking that step since we have a citizen. So I guess I would make a motion that we um, talk with um, Chief Goodens or whoever you need to talk to with South Portland and find out if indeed a crosswalk, there's a reasonable place to put in a crosswalk um, and if that would indeed solve this issue of destitute and crossing in that area. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Caitlin. Further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Okay. Opposed. Thank you. Just, just if I might, and we'll also, I, I don't think there was any, we'll also have a, a chat with the, the business owners there as well. I think, you know, the chief presented a lot of data that they should be aware of tonight, so we will invite them to, to be part of the dialogue as well. Madam Chair, then could I please change my vote? Uh -huh. Certainly. Thank you. I'll vote in the affirmative okay. if that's part of, the, part of the process. All right. So, 7 4. Okay. Jamie. Yes, yeah, thanks, Kathy. Um, just one question about the process for sending the letter to MDOT. Would that be that Maureen would draft it and then it would come from the chair? Would the council have any more uh, ability to review that? No, they're it, simply asking for a review. It, it, it's a fairly standard letter, a couple of sentences. Uh, so, you know, I, you know, unless the council wishes to review it, we, we, we usually would, usually either I would sign it or I'd give the council chair a call saying, you want to sign this letter? The only thoughts that I have was highlighting to, the, to MDOT that with the recent sale of the, that the triangle there, that there's going to be a new building going in there with the new library, with uh, potential activity in Key Bank, uh, with what's happening at Cumbies, you know, to, to highlight all the new activity that's going to increase vehicular and pedestrian traffic. Yeah, we want to make sure they're aware of all that. Jim, anybody else? Okay, then we will move on to item 38, 2015, the renewal of the agreement for the William H. Jordan Farm LLC to continue to operate the composting program at the recycling center. Yeah. Michael? Yeah, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, this has been operated by the William H. Jordan Farm since February of 2005. Uh, and I think what's really important is, is that the program saves the town labor and equipment costs to provide a significant organic recycling opportunity, and it also helps to preserve one of our family farms by having them to have a, a side business uh, that, that does this. Uh, what, what the particular arrangement is, is that you know, we have this agreement with them. Uh, they do all the moving of the material, they do all of the sales, they do everything, they keep the profits and all. But it, what it does, it just takes us out of the picture of having to deal with it all the time. Great. Does somebody want to make a motion? Jessica. I, I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? Jamie, thank you. Discussion? Where? Caitlin. Again, with our code of conduct, um, I am related to the Jordan Farm uh, family um, distantly, and also they are very close personal friends and acquaintances and business associates, but I don't have anything to do with the composting. Thank you. Okay. Any, dis any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, and none opposed. All right, um, looking up, there are no citizens here to discuss items not on the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm still moving in too quickly. Um, so, 39, 2015. Fort Williams Park use requests for 2015. I assume, Michael? Yeah, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission met last month and reviewed all of the annual requests. We, we try to have them do it all in one evening, and uh, they reviewed all of these, and there's, there's related fees for some of them, uh, but it, it's everything from the Engine One Art Show to a Taste of the Nation main event, which was held one other time, Family Fun Day, high school graduation, Little League, 
something called the Lucy Fund uh, and an American Cancer Society walk. Uh, but you know, it's a busy weekend, October 17th and 18th, uh, but uh, our public safety looked at this as well as public works and otherwise that post Columbus Day time is pretty quiet in the park, so we feel we can accommodate it. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? Molly? So move to approve the request for the Fort Williams Park use for 2015. Thank you. Is there a second? Seconded. Jim, thank you. Discussion? Um, I have a question. If we get additional use requests during the year, do we just approve them individually? Is that yes. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. And these are only the large group uses, the smaller group uses, there's other provisions for group. I think it comes to the council, I think it's over 150 people. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. Great. Anything else? No? All in favor? None opposed. Okay, now I will move on to the citizen opportunity for discussions of items not on the agenda. There is nobody in the room but us. So I am assuming we're going to move past that. Um, and. Um, the next thing we will do is go uh, to item 40-2015, the town manager's annual evaluation. Um, so I will uh, ask for a motion to go into executive session, and we will not be coming back into public session for anybody who's watching from home. So having said that, Jessica. I move that in conformance with one uh, MRSA sta sta statute, Statute section. annotated, what is section? It? Section 4056A, we hereby enter into executive session to continue the annual evaluation process for the town manager. Thank you, Jessica. Is there a second? Jim? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, all in favor? Unionized. Great. The double S just means section. Section. We can, um, Thank you. 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 Thank you.